welcome back to the youtube channel so in today's video we have a very nice product this is from the brand retroflag for the people who don't know retroflag making a lot of different cases in the past for example the snes super nes and did some reviews about it so check it out and even the sega mini classic casing really like all of the casing very high quality um, so i was very surprised and excited that seeing they have built herself a gpi case so this is more like in Game Boy Clone, you can stick a pie in it and you can do a lot of awesome stuff. Some people will say it's technology, but I say it's just magic. It's just magic, people. All right. So what are we going to get? Let's talk about a little bit of the box first. I really like the presentation. At the back, we're finding some information of the part that comes with it. Keep in mind, buying this thing doesn't mean you can just pull it out of the box and play some games. There is some little bit of assembly needed and you're going to need to buy the pie. And no power supply. <laughs> so yeah, this is what you're going to get, people. The box is empty. So I can throw it in. Because people like it. Yeah, do it again. All right, let's see what's inside the box. And what's... What are we going to get? All right, let's see. What are we going to get? Of course, the system itself. We're having this little case or cartridge. Where are you going to put the pie in? We're having a USB cable, little rubber thing. Ooh, not to forget. Piece of toilet manual, yep. Toilet paper manual, yep. And we have here a little plastic bag, Ugh, plastic. And uh, comes with a screwdriver, some little spacers, the things you're going to need to assemble it. But what you're not going to get, and there's something I still want to show you, Need to buy a Pi? You can buy it from Kiwi Electronics, for example, or Amazon, what you like. And you're going to need an SD card. And these two things are not included. All right, I'm going to show you how to assemble it. This is going to be one big Wicked Avenger. Wicked Assemble! First, we are going to wrap ourselves a Pi. Alright, SD card. I already added the firmware on this thing, so keep that one in mind. I'm not going to show you in this video. Here we have the little bag that contains all the screws and little things we're going to need. Even this little ribbon cable. Alright, mm, tiny screws. So if you want to have an uh, explanation how does it work, how you need to assemble it, I must say this toilet paper manual is not bad at all. Everything is very well explained. So this is going to be alright. Alright, so let's talk about the system itself. 
So the idea behind the card is very cool. So when you turn it around, you can just slide it in very easily and it's connected to your GPI case. So let's do a little review of what we're going to get and uh, let's play some games of course. So let's talk about the D-pad. The D-pad have a very nice touch. It is a little bit loose and you can see it on the camera, but that is something I've noticed. At the right side we're having four buttons, having the original color of the Game Boy, if I can remember it correctly. Got a very nice touch. Here at the front we're finding select and start, these rubbery buttons like the old Game Boy. And speaker over here and we're having a headphone jack. Here at the right side we're having volume control and of course where you can put in your SD. At the back we're finding two shoulder buttons. We have here the battery compartment. I am using just normal batteries. You can use rechargeable if you like. And here you can find, if they are getting out, I just wanted to show you. Here we can put the safe shutdown on and off. So this means if you're having the script installed, you shut down the Game Boy and it shuts the software off. All right, and here a quick side-by-side -side comparison with the original Game Boy just to give you a little bit of the measurements between the two systems. And what you can see of the Retroflex GPI case, it is not the same measurements. It looks a little bit like the Game Boy, but it's still totally different. One of the things I've noticed that the original D-pad of this original Game Boy is way bigger. Personally, I think this is a big deal. I really like big D-pads. And if you look at the touch of it, this got a way better touch than the GPI case. So here in Europe, I think there were a lot of people having big hands. So that is why I really like the Game Boy, the original Game Boy. But if you hold the retro flag, it's very small. It's not small like an LDK. Check the video if you missed it out. But still, personally, I really prefer the old case, the big one, the clunky one. I love it. And here at the left side we're finding brightness control for the LCD and a little plug. So if you have rechargeable batteries, you can recharge it. So that would be very cool, don't you think? All right, let's power it on. If you have installed the firmware and every update you needed, you're going to get the Raspberry Pi or Retro Pi installing file. So if you don't see anything, you did something wrong. So if you want to know what kind of support the retro pi system has as you can see a lot of support this is not even all you can install way more kind of games like atari dos homebrew there is so much possible with raspberry pi but keep in mind the zero is the less powerful you know, version all right so let's talk about the screen itself i really like what i'm seeing here but you can see it's a very beautiful screen colorful eps it got a very nice view angle so I think this is a very big positive side of this GPI case. All right, let's play some games. So here at the right side, we're finding volume control. I set the volume in the software maximum. And the speaker is very loud, as you can hear. All right, on the left side, we're finding brightness control. So that is very awesome that it has. So if you want to adjust it, that is very easy to go. All right, let's start. Let's see how it plays. Keep in mind, if you're getting this, you need to remap everything. I have some sound issues, but this is more like an emulator problem. Again, you need to remap, you need to set your emulator. So if you want to play this, just straight out of the box, stick a pie in it and just go. You can't forget about it. It's one big tutorial or technical nightmare if you ask me, if you want to set it up. There are some fellow YouTubers who make very good tutorials of it. So they will help you out if you want to have a big challenge. But as you can see, the end result is very cool. The goal next to for the Mega Drive. <laughs> 
Right, let's play a little bit of Neo Geo. More volume. I'm very curious how the D-pad is going to respond. Hmm. So what I've noticed that with this D-pad, if you want to move and jump at the same time, this can be very challenging. You need to press it very hard. Sometimes I have this little weird thing going on. And then I have the problem with the LDK, for example. With the D-pad itself, or if you want to do moves. No. By the way, it's more like a personal handicap, but you're getting the point. Let's play some Super NES, Donkey Kong Country 2. <laughs> I was pressing the wrong button. Let's check my button go. Go away, stupid mouse. Sounds good. Right people, for the final conclusion about the Retroflex GPI case. This is going to be a very big final conclusion because I want to cover every experience I had with this thing. So, I hope you're ready for it. Let's go. All right, let's talk about the screen. The screen itself, I really love it. I think this is one of the best screens I have seen in a budget system like this. And yes, it's a budget system. If you look at all the other systems, all the other Pi versions that cost, let's say, 200 euros, this one is pretty damn cheap and got a very nice screen. The D-pad, it works fine for, let's say, racing games, adventure games. But you want to have some fighting games and play it. Um, no, it's not the best D-pad I have seen. I really like how they made the shoulder buttons one with the casing, but in overall I am not the biggest fan of it. If you look at the product compartment, for the nostalgia feeling, yes, very cool that you have old school batteries. You can put rechargeable batteries if you want, but to be honest, just put a lithium ion battery inside, a big one like all the expensive Game Boy Pies, and you can just basically play for a very long time and easily recharge it. So. If you look at the cartridge at the top, I think it's a very nice thing. It gives this extra nostalgic feeling to it and it's very easy to stick a pie in it. So that's a very cool thing. But if you want to put the case together, install all of the software, there are some tutorials out there, for example, with ET Prime. But I can tell you already, it's still very hard to do. 
because the lack of a USB connection is not very easy, if you ask me. So for the people who are searching and ready to go, plug and play portable system. The GPI case is nothing for you. It's something you need to see like a little project. It's very easy, plug and play, no soldering needed. And I really like what they're going with this.